All right, and we're back at Beantown Aquatics with Andre. How's it going, my friend? Hey, Greg. Awesome. So, what do we got going on here? We got a lot of new projects, a lot of updates since the last time I've been here. I think the biggest one is standing right in front of us. So, what is this? So, I decided to upgrade from my uh, last system I had here. I had a uh, dual stand with um, 125 on top and a uh, 180 on the bottom. It was sort of like uh, this this setup here, right? It was it's like two two big okay so identical two big tanks and they were right here and uh you've decided to break that down and now we've got a lot of smaller tanks yeah um i think this this way is going to give me a little more flexibility with a uh, different type of fish that i can have in there um it's going to be 18 tanks these ones right here are 29 highs yep and then these uh 20 longs. 20 longs yep so they all they all fit on this rack together and then uh you're just telling me you you switched from a black background and now you're doing a blue background and this is uh vinyl right yeah it's the same vinyl that you use to uh, make signs one side's adhesive it goes on pretty easy i mean wet it down a little bit of um, water and just squeegee out the bubbles right so you get as many bubbles out as you can and then um at the end of the day, it looks something like uh, like you see over here. Yep. That's cool. So, um, so the the issue you were having was the black backgrounds, especially with the darker fish, it was sort of difficult to see them, especially if, if it wasn't like a high light tank, right? But now with the blue background, the the fish really pop quite a bit more. Yeah, like since I use LED lights, it just the black just absorbed all the color. Yeah. So I mean now it's like. With the uh, LEDs, the blue just reflects off and you can see the fish a lot better. Right, right. It bounces around. And the other thing we, we were looking at was, uh, so you use the styrofoam on the bottom to level the tanks out. And uh, there's actually a silver, I don't know if you see the silver edge on that. I think what's happening is the, the blue is sort of bouncing off the silver and it sort of lights the whole tank up and it looks, uh, looks pretty good. Yeah, and I, I went bare bottom recently, so I mean... With the way I have it now, the light reflects off of the fish. I mean, it makes it take a lot brighter. Right, right. So we've got... It's a lot easier to clean, too, without the substrate. Oh, totally. All of my tanks uh, are bare bottom, just for that reason. So this is the last tank down here, right, that that has the, the sand substrate in it? Yeah, I'll be getting rid of that soon. I mean, it just, it's too much maintenance. I mean, I have, I want to be, once this rack is done, I'll be at over 100 tanks. So I mean... If I can find a way to cut cut down the time for maintenance, I mean, that's ideal. Yeah, totally. That's what it's all about, right? So what's left over here is, uh, so you bought all the tanks, you got all the backgrounds on, the stand is built. I'll take a quick look at the stand, uh, two by four construction, right? You got the uh, the notches cut out and then the uh, the load is, is being carried by the, the beams there. Yeah, so, dado uh, joints, that's what I use. Yep, dado joints. So those are uh, nice and sturdy. And you've got the drain lines. I don't know if you guys can see the drain lines back behind. So we've got the drain lines already ready to go for all these tanks. And you said the last thing you need to do is take these outside one at a time and drill them. Yeah, um, that's gonna be a long process. I mean, 18 tanks and I mean, slow and steady it's going to take at least 20 minutes 25 minutes yeah. each tank to drill them. and it's the winter too so drilling tanks outside in the winter is yeah. twice as fun <laughs> yeah definitely not gonna be fun I mean, <laughs> i'm procrastinating on drilling it but i mean it has to get done yeah yeah because you have a, a central uh, water filtration system drip system wastewater system in the entire room we'll get to that in a minute but this is the other big thing um which is new and uh, you're doing a lot more of uh, fish fish importing, so you're getting big boxes of fish in, right? And so uh, the easiest thing to do a lot of times is just uh, get all of those fish into a tank quickly, right? And so that's what these stock tanks are all about? Yeah, usually whenever I get a shipment, I can just put all the fish in there, acclimate them, treat them if necessary for any kind of parasites if they get any, Yep. be able to watch them and um, and then once they go through their quarantine process, I can move them out to whatever tanks and get ready, get these ready for the next shipment to come in. So what do we got in here? 
These are mostly bigger haps. Like you get uh, Venusis, Fuscos, Malawi Eye Biters, Albino Eye Biter. That's what that big guy is right there. Yeah, in the back. And um, this one, the other one is mostly all peacocks. Over here. We got uh, Malaria Island, Cobus, um, Swallowtails. Um, just a bunch of different people, mostly all peacocks, the smaller stuff. Yep. Well, you know I love stock tanks, right? Because I've got the 300 gallon stock tank, so I definitely approve of these. It's a little bit harder to see the fish. Are you able to catch one? Yeah. You, your net is like way bigger than my net. Yeah, it makes. I didn't think it was going to be this big when I, when I bought it. But <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Let's see. Red Empress, you got a. Uh, um, a Kobu here, you got a Malaria Island, that's that a guy's yellow one. Crazy colorful. Whoa. Nice. So uh, once those go through their, their quarantine phase in the bins, then they'll make their way into your uh, fish racks, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll set them up. And um, that's what like one of these racks is going to go for, and one of the other racks in the other room. I can separate them. Keep be able to keep a better eye on how they look, right? And then, um, if you need further treatment, I retreat them. But usually, the place I get my fish from, they have outstanding quality fish, so right. they rarely have any problems with it. Nice. So, let's uh, we mentioned the central filtration system. If you guys saw uh, past videos from Bean Town Aquatics, you'll know that this is the heart of the fish room, and this is our IBC tote, right. Yeah, 300 gallon tote. 300 gallon tote, completely filled to the top. And uh, you've got quite a bit of equipment back here. Um, and it all has a purpose, right? Can you walk us through sort of how this how this fills up in the morning and, and how it sort of distributes water to all the tanks and all the pieces that are involved? So it starts off right here. You have a mixing valve where it sets the temperature at 78. Goes through a three stage filter. You got sediment filter, carbon, the carbon block. Yeah goes around and fills up right through here. Okay. So uh, that's, uh, is that a, a three quarter inch line? Something um, like that? Yeah, three quarter inch. Okay, so that, that will fill the 300 gallon stock tank, or 300 gallon IBC, and how long does that take approximately? Uh, about an hour and 45 minutes. Hour and 45 minutes, fills up, and then it shuts off with a float switch? There's a float switch and there's actual Everything's controlled by the timers too, so okay. the timer shuts off after two hours. Okay. Okay. And so then it's filled up, and because you got the mixing valve, it's at the appropriate temperature already, so you don't have to wait to heat the water up. And then what's the next step from there? Um, when it gets about halfway up, I have a pump inside that starts circulating the water, and um, and a heater in there to keep the temperature at the, at the 78 degrees. Yep. Once this thing is full, it will uh, continue mixing for another 15 minutes, and then the timer will turn on, depending on what time of day it is, which zone. So you got zone one right here. You got the um, solenoid. solenoid. Yep. And so this turns on and off the valve for here. Yep. And then this is zone two, which is the other room. So we'll go in the other room to show you. But the main room is zone one. Okay. Uh, each tank gets about 10 to 15 percent water change every day depending every on, day. on whether it's a fry tank or a breeder tank or just just a holding tank okay so it's getting a water change every single day automatically yeah okay let's let's go take a look at uh, is that all the equipment here yeah then they like once once the um the water gets down real low. I have a low water sensor, so it shuts the pumps off okay. automatically. Yeah, so your pump doesn't run dry. And, yeah. yeah. So everything has uh, like a backup. Okay. So it's, like, it's on a 24-hour cycle. Yep. Yeah. Nice. And twice a twice a day it turns on, fills this up. And okay. Very cool. So then uh, this water is going through either zone one or zone two. Here we go. Follow one of those uh, to a drip head whatever one's closest so the black line right here this is the water line yeah and then the clear lines are the air, air lines line, since everything's run off the central air system yeah so then uh, you'll just have a constant drip in every single one of your tanks 
and uh, every tank is drilled with an overflow. You can see one way in the back there. Oh yeah, you can see this one right here. Every tank has an overflow bulkhead drilled into it. And then all of those drain lines run along the floor. You've got like a, what is it, a one inch line, or a, like two inch and, in, inch and a half line. Yep. And all of that goes to uh, the floor drain. The floor drain. So there we go, all the water goes to the floor drain and uh, that's how the wastewater exits the system. Yeah. Very cool. So uh, some of these tanks are being used for full size fish, some of these tanks are being used for grow outs. Let's go take a look at uh, the new room that you just set up and uh, all the tanks that are in there. But actually first, we've got something cool here. This is uh, Bean Town food, right? Yeah, we have our own fish food line. We have carnivore, omnivore, herbivore. All the food is um, made with probiotics. We also have um, a medicated food line if you want to treat like internal parasites or whatever. Yep. Um, I actually use that stuff to uh, save my Oscar, by the way. So the, uh, the medicated stuff is uh, definitely good stuff. Yeah, we have uh, carnivore sticks. Yep. Uh, we have two sizes, two millimeter and um, and three millimeter. Very cool. And we do have uh, also have a fry food. Yep. Okay. So like a finer powder for uh, your smaller fish. Yep. Very nice. So we got the ingredients. We got the analysis on it. Bean Town label. Boom. Fish food. That must be really exciting that you have your own line of fish food. Yeah, it's something I want to do for years. It's like, I don't know, it just, it still amazed me that I'm, I was able to, to get it done. Yeah. But I mean, I'm able to pick some of the ingredients that go in. Sure. And like, I wanted, one thing that I wanted was a probiotics to help with the digestive with, um, in the fish. So I mean, that was, that's a major, major thing that I wanted to get done. You don't see a lot of foods out there on the market that have it, so. Right, right. Cool, so we got some dry goods, we got some fish. We go through here in the other back room and this is one of your more recent projects, right? This this was an office <laughs> and, yeah. and, and and now it's more fish. Yeah, yeah. Who, needs an, who needs an office? <laughs> ah, right, exactly. Who needs an office when you can have more fish? <laughs> so we've got one rack here and then we've got a small rack here and then we've got a third rack right over here. And I think this is the only metal rack that you have, right? Yeah, everything I've made, all the other racks, are all wooden racks, but this one, it's like I just decided to try something new, but I really don't like it, because I like making the racks how I want it, so I mean, I was limited to what size tanks I could put on. Right. Because you only make them in a certain size. Right, you sort of lose a little bit of space sometimes, like on the ends, like you can't design it to your exact specifications. You're sort of limited to whatever they're selling. I mean, the only good thing is, I mean, you can buy a rack in the morning and have the tank set up that night. Right, right. No more painting, no nothing, but. Right. Very cool. So over here, we've got quite a few, quite a few fish, and these are all for sale. These are all on your website. Uh, sort of walk us through a few of these tanks. Anything uh, stand out? Uh, this is one of my favorite, Mylochromus ericatania. Like the colors on this guy, he's he's colored down. So I mean, he's. Once he gets in his breeding dress or gets in a bigger tank where he's more comfortable, I mean, his colors is going to be amazing. Yeah, they look good against the blue background too. And you said that you you had black backgrounds on all of these tanks, and you like took them all down and redid all of them with the blue. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> it's like you walk by a, a tank and you wouldn't be able to see the fish. I mean, yeah, some fish wouldn't get fed just because I wouldn't even know that there's not a fish. In there. Right. I mean, especially especially with the the tanks going the long way here, uh, they're they're pretty deep. So uh, you know, being able to see all the way in the back there, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, tricky sometimes. Those are forty breeders. Yep. Another one of my favorites too. It's um, I get in some wild caught fish. So I mean, these guys are pretty rare. They're uh, midnight peacocks, wild caught. These are beautiful. I love the uh, like the electric blue on the top of the fin there. That's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean they're a little like pricey, but I mean you don't you don't see them often. Yeah, definitely. And I was looking at these ones over here too, um, with the uh, the blue and the the yellow 
Yeah, those are also wild caught. Those are uh, Menji Blues. Got wild caught my Landys. Very cool. A lot of really cool fish. So, Bean Town Aquatics out of Boston, Massachusetts, specializing in cichlids. You're breeding fish. You're also bringing fish in, and you've got a lot of uh, dry goods as well. You got a, a whole wall of uh, north north fin food yeah. here too, right? Yeah, it's one of the foods that we actually feed our fish. I mean, we give them a mixed diet, but I mean, their primary diet is the Bean Town food. Then we supplement it with north fin, yep. omega one, and extreme. Very cool. And you said you're you're sort of running out of space here down in the basement and you're actually setting up a, a second location for your dry goods, right? Yeah, I have uh, another location that um, is just going to be just for shipping. It's not going to be really for walking, but I mean it's almost 400 square feet and I'm just going to pack it in with as much dry goods as I can. Nice. So the next time we drop by, uh, I think we're going to plan on maybe doing a, a road trip to the uh, to the airport, maybe do a, a fish pickup. I think that'll be a lot of fun. And maybe we can also check out the new location and all of the uh, the dry goods that you'll be stocking there as well. Yeah, we're in the um, beginning stages over there, so I mean, it's not full yet, but I mean, I got a lot of shelf space that I got to fill with products. So I mean, yeah. bring in a lot more products. A lot more fish. I mean, we're expanding with the other rack, so we're expanding every way possible. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, you've definitely maxed out your space down here, so uh, it'll be exciting to see uh, see the next space as well. All right, guys. Well, this was a quick tour of Bean Town Aquatics with Andre, the owner. Thank you very much for the time, my friend, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys, for watching. All right, check them out uh, online. Website is beantownaquatics.com. Yep, beantownaquatics.com. We're on uh, Instagram too, uh, Facebook, beantown, facebook.com slash beantownaquatics. Uh, send us an email. Uh, give me a call if you have a problem. I mean, if you're local, one thing I do for the local people is if you run into problems at nighttime with your fish, you're sick. Yeah. Give me a call. I'll I'll open the doors and you can get whatever meds you need just to take care of your fish. Perfect. Well, this man definitely appreciates <laughs> fish. Passionate about fish. His entire basement down here is walls and walls of fish and he's doing all of this for you guys. So, definitely go check him out and uh we'll see you next time.